Hi guys, welcome to Moon Video number 9. And uh, using my new Ioptron uh, Photron RC6 telescope. More designed for deep sky objects than shooting the moon. So I did uh, have to remove the, uh, uh, the one inch ring, uh, the extension ring. And uh, was able to attain focus. Uh, so that was kind of the, the setup there. Anyhow, um, taking a quick jaunt around the moon. Um, please excuse the waviness, that's some branches in the way and uh, a little bit windy outside at the time of uh, making this video. Uh, and right now we're looking at uh, Tycho just about in the center of the screen there. That's always a hard one to to get a good shot on because it's uh, uh, so bright in color so I did manage to get the color settings or the uh, the light settings to something fairly reasonable and as we go around which is actually the east side uh, as viewed from Earth it's actually on the west side of the moon but it's the east side of the moon. And uh, up top there we see Chrysium with the, uh, the two eyeballs and the little smile. And uh, I think I zoomed into that one a little bit more later on, but um, it, uh, it looks pretty darn good. Uh, the atmosphere wasn't the greatest. Um, did have quite a bit of wind so, uh, you know, atmospheric disturbance, uh, of course, gives you that, that watery look. And by no means does it mean that there's water there. Just for those people who think that there's some kind of water above the firmament. <laughs> and uh, as we cruise around, um, a few of the the mares um, you can see the uh, well-defined circular crater up in the top there that's uh, Plato and now we got Cop Copernicus uh, center screen and that looks pretty darn good too so all in all I think um, my my video here turned out not bad running in prime and I, I was, uh, of course, experimenting with the, uh, the digital zoom. And here we zoom in a little bit on uh, Copernicus. It looks pretty good. I'm not going to complain anyway. Um, not worth it. <laughs> um, that does look uh, pretty good. Uh, just like I say, the, the atmospheric disturbance is um, a little tough to get rid of. Especially since I'm in the city and shooting across uh, a fair, fair portion of uh, real estate. Which of course generates extra heat. And uh, to top it all off, of course, we've got the, uh, the trees bouncing around. But it does look pretty darn good. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, drag you into Lightroom here for a couple minutes and uh, show you some of the um, the full moon uh, photos that I was actually able to get, and I was very pleased with them. Uh, a few of them turned out very well. Um, the clarity and focus, everything was um, pretty good. So it's it's always tough to to get really really good shots, um, you know, especially with the the atmosphere. So uh, rather than dragging it on here, I will take you into uh, Lightroom and show you uh, right after we look at Plato that nice round crater there. 
I think I zoomed into that a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And uh, so that's Play-Doh. That nice round one at the top. Okay, um, we'll drag you into Lightroom now. Okay guys, here we are in, in Lightroom in the Adobe software. And this is, uh, I think, my best uh, photo uh, of the um, the full moon, which was only at 93, uh, what is it, 99.3% uh, luminosity. So it wasn't quite 100% full, but uh, it's pretty darn close. And it's always tough to get it because uh, it happens during the day in many cases. Um, and of course you, you don't get to, uh, to actually see the, uh, the true full moon. But you know, looking at the, uh, the photo, the fact that I was able to uh, capture the, uh, uh, the whole moon um, in one shot um, is always amazing. Um, haven't been able to do that because of the, uh, the varying size on the other telescope as far as the uh, uh, using the, uh, the Barlow lenses and stuff like that. So running in prime without uh, the Barlow is really done quite well for me here. Um, so if we move in just a tiny bit, you can see a little bit more detail. And we were looking at uh, Play-Doh up here uh, before I cut away from the other video. So um, it does look pretty good. Um, the Maris here all seem to have turned out fairly well. Uh, Chrysium up top, uh, Copernicus Crater, uh, and of course we go down to Tycho down here. Um, all seem to uh, have gone fairly well, so if I zoom in a little bit more on these areas, um, we'll leave it about there, you can really see some of the detail. Uh, of course here in Chrysium are two little eyeballs and the uh, the, the happy face smile um, and it does make me smile because it uh, it shows fairly good clarity here um, it's always always difficult with the uh, the atmosphere um, you know causing disturbance and unfortunately like I mentioned before in the other videos um, we need the atmosphere but uh, uh, it does uh, hinder us a little bit uh, when we're trying to take photos uh, and the like. So again, over here, Play-Doh, um, you know, looks pretty darn good. And you can see the, uh, the mountain ridges and uh, the mares um, turned out quite nice. A lot of the detail in here is, is really, really good. Um, and this is uh, Copernicus again. So, um, you know, even if we zoom in a little bit more on, on those areas, um, the detail is still fairly good. Um, you know, I'm not going to say it's 100%, but it's uh, it's been a journey. And uh, since I started doing this uh, about four months ago, um, I've come a long way as far as uh, the um, you know the clarity and the ability to get closer. And uh, that was one of the comments that uh, uh, one fellow had made that, uh, you know, he wants to be able to get close enough so you can touch it. Well, we're, uh, we're pretty close to getting there. Anyway, um, I won't drag this out too much more. I just figured I'd share this with you and show you what I was able to get. So again, it's uh, running the uh, Ioptron Potron RC6 telescope in prime um, without any uh, Barlow lenses or anything like that attached, just the camera. And uh, in my opinion, um, the photos turned out fairly well. Um, like I say, I think this is about the best shot, so that's why I'm kind of showing it off. And I'm happy with it. Um, and as I mentioned before, there's always 
always room to improve a little bit so uh, the future stuff will uh, probably be a little uh, a little bit more uh, detailed but for now I'm happy with this uh, the one thing that I was not able to do I was trying to get my uh, Celestron uh, Next Image 5 camera uh, working on here on the telescope and I was not able to get it to focus so I still have to find out exactly where the, uh, the focal point is for that one but anyhow that's it for now I just figured like I said I wanted to share that with you guys take care thanks for watching and clear skies.